Hello and welcome to the Discover Dayton podcast, the show that's all about the Gem City's past, present, and future. My name is Arch Grieve and I'm your host, and today I get to talk to Charlie Green, the founder of Tadmore Greens, a native plant nursery that has partnered with the Dayton Food Bank and has a hydroponic nursery at that location where they help grow food for people experiencing food insecurity and educate people about plants that are native to Ohio. So join me for my conversation with him coming up in just a moment. Well, hello and welcome to the show and thanks so much for coming on to talk with me today. Yeah, it's great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, so to start off, before we get into uh, talking about uh, Tadmore Greens, your nursery, uh, too much, I, I wonder if maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you into plants in the first place. I grew up here north of Dayton and from, from there I went to college out in Oregon. I stayed out on the west coast for 15 years. Then I got hired with an airline, Now, and I still work for them, and uh, moved to New York City. When I moved back to Ohio, it was to take care of my mother going through cancer treatments. And so one of the ways that gave me therapy was going to native plants, and I started volunteering at the Marianist Environmental Education Center. And that, you know, they taught me everything. From there, it was just became an obsession something to distract my mother while we were going through chemo treatments. Sure. And um, so when I found native plants, that's what really balanced myself um, with everything that I was doing, working full time, taking care of my mother, having an absent father that didn't know how to deal with his wife having cancer 47 years. And so, you know, I was talking with my father, like, you know, this is, kind of a good outlet like you know what if we build a greenhouse on our property you know we could this is something that we could enjoy together with mom it's you know have us our own time to do it and they live on seven acres up in vandalia currently and you know then he's like oh yeah we could do farmers markets and sell hydroponic vegetables and I was like, better yet, why don't we give away the food <laughs> mm -hmm. and to people in need because so many people need the most nutritious food available and fresh food. And also we could promote, that's when I was getting into native plants and we could promote native plants. Well, you know, it didn't, it didn't click until three years later that I was coming up with an idea that was trying to help solve food insecurity for our community and for our native pollinators. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and when that clicked, it like came full circle. And, and the idea stagnated because it's like, how am I gonna work with my father? We've never <laughs> worked well together. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, it was uh, um, the Memorial Day tornado that came through and, you know, up in Vandalia, if that tornado had been going just northeast, you know, our house would have been destroyed. And I'm in there with my mom, our new puppy, and my father, and we're in the basement. And you can see this dark sky, you can hear the tornado going. And, you know, that changed Dayton. And then two weeks you know, several months later, it changed even further with the shooting. Right. And my dad's business, he's had his business on the west side of Dayton for 25 years. And so it's right by the Dayton Food Bank. And so, you know, they he went over to donate money because the lines going to the food bank were all the way down the road and car accidents happening all the time. And then, you know, this is when we, my dad went in and met the people of the food bank and started talking to James Hoffer about the urban garden and told him about the idea that we had, like building a hydroponic greenhouse. And we, three years later, we turned it into a reality. And it's been really rewarding. <laughs> yeah, and it sounds like it. That's so cool. Well, and speaking of the greenhouse so you know you've started tadmore green which 
you know, as you mentioned, you partnered with the Dayton Food Bank and opened up this greenhouse and named it, you know, in honor of your mother, Beverly K. Greenhouse. And so I wonder, could you maybe explain why you decided to partner with the food bank to bring food to Dayton? Yeah, I mean, it's just a great organization. I mean, when you, the Dayton Food Bank is consistently ranked one of the top food banks in the country um, in terms of what they give back to the community. Um, they work really hard and work so hard for the community and, you know, every bit comes back to Dayton. And so it just became a perfect match because they were willing to go into so many sustainable projects with their composting food bucket program, mm -hmm. which pro provides fresh compost for their 40 raised beds, which they already produce four tons of um, food in a summer. Wow. from the 40 raised beds and then now adding on this greenhouse it's a, you know we could see up to a hundred thousand heads of lettuce in a year oh wow that's a lot <laughs> <Very cool. Yeah. laughs> and we're harvesting that in the morning and giving it to people right at the drive through well so as you mentioned the, the greenhouse is is a hydroponic greenhouse and i i have a little bit of an idea of what that means but if i wonder if you could help me <laughs> understand it a little bit better and maybe educate listeners um, who may not know uh, what, what is hydroponic farming. And, uh, <laughs> well, I probably have a little bit more than you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> because I, like pretty much when this happened, I, I like that I felt in the beginning that I could learn about native plants, not coming from a horticulture background, and then also learn about hydroponics at the same time. So... <laughs> nice. So we pretty much handed the hydroponic side to the Dayton Food Bank, and so now they oversee all of that. But in terms of the basics for hydroponic farming, it's it's just it's the future of farming. Um, it uses ninety percent less water. You're uh -huh. not degrading the soil. The runoff from the nutrients in there are you know basic chemicals that you find in the ground already. So you're not contaminating land or your waterways. Um, there's no pesticides use. There's no use of pesticides or herbicides because no weeds are going to grow in there. And, and it's a sterile environment that is limited to a certain group of people that work there. And you can grow continuously year round. And it's just all around good. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, you know, the water losses through evaporation. And so it just became. And plus the turnover of lettuce is, you know, six weeks. And so that's how we can get so much harvest time. Gotcha. Very cool. Well, um, you've mentioned too that, you know, you guys have a special emphasis on native plants. And I remember when I was a teacher, I did a cross-curricular project one time with the science teacher and I was talking about globalization, but uh, the students were also learning about you know, plants through it and kind of the dangers of invasive species. And so, you know, I'm a little bit familiar with native plants, but uh, not very much. So <laughs> I'm wondering, why, yeah. did you, why did you choose to focus on native plants in particular and what kinds do you have? You know, I chose native plants because when you get into, when you really dive deep into the native plants that were here in the 1800s, everywhere in Ohio, I, we have such a diversity because we were a woodland edge prairie savanna um, area that we had so many plants adapt to sun and shade so a lot of our plants have so much versatility like i'm making plant labels right now and i'm like well this can work in this but also to this <laughs> <laughs> and but it's just a it's just the plants that were present before we brought over all our invasive species that have taken over. And now, you know, we, I, I look through areas and I see, you know, I keep discovering new invasive species on my dad's land and he's right by Taylorsville Park. And so the importance, one of the main things about native plants and how it impacts our local environment is the genetics of our native plants are used to our soil. So it's, they're used to growing in this hard clay soil. So the roots can get, you know, a compass plant, which is a beautiful, tall prairie flower. That plant 
its roots can grow 16 feet down into the ground. Wow. And the benefits of that is that this is capturing atmospheric carbon. And that also um, transfers that carbon into starches and sugars, making your soil more healthy. Like there's just so many impacts on your local environment because of these long root structures. Whereas like your hosta that's from Asia is going to grow roots that are two feet deep and it's not going to give much in, in anything. And so, as a, you know, prairies are, are, are Ohio's oceans in terms of carb, carbon capture and, and native plants are just a basic way that we can do as a city to change our local environment and improve our pollinators' health. Sure, absolutely. No, that makes sense. Well, yeah. And one thing I know that you do too that's really cool is you have a, uh, a buy one, give one program. So can you explain how that works? Because that's kind of unique. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be starting that up. I, I'm still working on, the, I I am definitely focusing on one thing at a time. You sure. know, I, so this was something that I thought of in the beginning where and it's transformed into um, Planet Forward Dayton. And so Planet Forward will be where a customer can buy a sticker of, a, of their choosing and pick it out, pick out a plant, and that sticker is the cost of a plant, and they can choose which plant they want to give away at the food bank drive through Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm working on how the logistics of all that, but I, I hope to have that up and going this summer, and I'm going to include all the native plant growers in. I want every all the native plant growers to be involved um, in this program and just creating more habitat and just you know every if every person in this area just adds one native plant, like we will benefit so many pollinators and sure. and benefit our hydroponic greenhouse. <laughs> but I want to get everyone in everyone in the um, native plant world because there's, you know, there's not too many of us. And there's a lot of people when they go to larger stores, they'll see native plants. And it's paying attention to where those native plants are from because you kind of waste your money if they're not grown <laughs> locally. Oh, okay. If you're getting your native plants um, that are native, but they were grown in a nursery in Georgia, they're not going to really survive our, they'll survive our winter, but maybe two seasons. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. But well, it's kind of a, it's also, I mean, it's kind of a way to have us all work together as native plant growers because we're all a team. Like ultimately, we want what's best for our, environment it's not a competition from any of the local growers it's just us against it's just against like home depot and places where you regularly get your plants so you can educating people about the importance of local genetics sure yeah absolutely well um speaking of educating people i guess you uh, actually have a really helpful plant inventory and planting guide on your website so um could you maybe explain where people could find that and what what that, I guess, what you talk about on there? <laughs> what? I haven't even updated my website yet. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even updated. Hey, I'm selling at Second Street Market starting May 22nd. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm getting there. Um, but yeah, uh, tadmoregreens.com. And um, I post frequently on Instagram, which is also connected to my Facebook, which Facebook is weird and hides comments <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Um, I'm getting the hang of social media, maybe if I need to get a social media manager. Um, but just, you know, reach out. We can, I, I plan on holding uh, volunteering events at our native gardens outside of the food bank. And I get my friend, Brooke Medlin to help me out, who's a horticulturalist. And uh, I mean, it's a great way to pick your brain and then also get more volunteers out at the food bank. Cause you know, we 
have been struggling for volunteers. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And, uh, just like everyone's been struggling for workers, we're struggling for um, just people to help us out. And, you know, it's amazing the work that that the people of the food bank have been doing out in the gardens with like a staff of four people and they're harvesting so much and doing hand picking pests and doing all these like you know all this garden work <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so does that mean people would be able to potentially volunteer for the food bank and work out in the, oh yeah the greenhouse now everyone can volunteer at the food bank just go to the food bank website and they do regular vol volunteer um events and then i'll post stuff on my instagram and facebook and um have them if i'm having something specific to the native gardens because I've, I've done for the that whole time before we even started the greenhouse i've been working on um uh, just beautifying the outside of the urban gardening, just uh, getting so many more pollinators back into the, like the old clay soil that we couldn't even get grass to grow. Now it's like a reclaimed prairie with thousands of wildflowers. Not, not thousands, but <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> sure, yeah. That's did awesome. a rain garden and added um, 135 trees last October. Wow. And, but I'm also counting trees that are like five inches tall, so, <laughs> but I'm going to claim it. <laughs> a tree is a tree, right? A tree is a tree, even if it's <laughs> three inches tall. <laughs> but no, it's got it. And that is also like native plums. I put in pawpaws, like buckeye trees. I have meek, uh, the Mary's Environmental Education Center also um, uh, uh, donated quite a bit of trees for me as well to get like some oak trees and I dug up a lot of sycamore trees that grow in my dad's like gutter area. <laughs> so nice. I always have to move trees. I have like 70 more. So if anyone wants sycamore trees, just give me a holler. <laughs> I don't know if I need any of those, although uh, you mentioned the the pawpaw trees. I love pawpaws. And uh, I will they like, I've always wondered, could I plant those in my backyard or? Oh yeah, they're an understory tree. And okay. so if you have a shady area to begin when they're young, and then as they get older, it can become a little bit more of a sunny area. Mm -hmm. Like they love, they'll, they'll flourish. Um, it'll take 10 years until you get maturity of doing, getting fruit. But I've been really lucky in the connections that I've met in Dayton. Um, I started going partial to pie. Oh, yeah. They, they do a pawpaw custard pie. Oh, nice. Fall. And so what ends up happening is they give half their seeds to Metro Parks and then the other half to me. Oh, nice. This year, I shared with, I had so many seeds that I still shared with like deeply rooted landscapes, down nature's path, and meek. And I still had 200 pawpaw seeds that I'm hoping that pop up this year. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I, well, so you you do sell them too? Like I can come in. I, can... I should have them. I, I mean, as long as they start popping up, they're they're one of those plants where they concentrate on their root growth mm -hmm. for like three months. So you don't know if they're gonna pop, if they're not gonna be successful or not. And so as a, as a novice who I felt last time I was, it was sort of dumb luck that I ended up getting, you know, 10 pawpaw trees last year when I did everything wrong. So now I, you know, started new things, but uh, I'm hoping to at least have like, you know, a hundred trees by the yeah. fall. <laughs> no, I love that. I I grew up. My grandparents had a place down in southern Ohio, and mm -hmm. um, it was on a big hill right next to the Ohio River. And there were pawpaw trees all over it. And I loved, you know, gathering pawpaws. And um, and we actually made a pie one time and stuff. So okay. I uh, I've heard someone put it in beer recently. I'd love to try that. I've never had. Yeah, that and there was a. Um, yeah, it's you know all all over by Athens in that area where they have. Mm -hmm. the Fest. And I think they're, I don't know, that was the spice bush berry. I saw that they made spice bush berry gin as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, sorry about the uh, paw paw tangent, but I, <laughs> I had to ask about that. I think I'll do I mean, that's, that's everyone's favorite. So that's why I'm hoping I'm successful. And, uh, 
you know, I've, I really hope I am. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I've heard different things. Do you need a male and female of the tree for them to eventually have fruit or do you what does um, that work not a male and female you just need because they colonize areas mm -hmm. so they're kind of like create a colony so they'll be the same genetics so they can't mate with each other so they need to be you need to have um just different genetics in the trees that you get and then kind of have them just close enough where they're around but so they can colonize a little area and then this area colonizes another little area Gotcha. Okay. I mean, I'm not a Paul Paul expert by uh -huh. any means. <laughs> well, much more than I am. But so. uh, I know I, I got this Paul Paul book and I'm like, you know, I have horrible ADHD and I gave it to one of my friends that was a master gardener and I was like, now give me a book report. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, if someone is considering planting native plants in their own garden, what would you tell them to maybe convince them they should and how should they get started? You know, the first thing to start off with is, is just researching what's available in your area and finding a grower. And just once you find that unique plant that speaks to you, because we, we have, I don't, mine was rattlesnake master. I was, you know, when I looked up rattlesnake master, I'm like, I've never seen this plant. What is this? And it just, just this alien plant that used to be common here. And these plants all had specific necessities for our pollinators that have been here. Like they've evolved over centuries, thousands of years, not, I mean, more than centuries. Like right. they have coexisted and commingled. And then we're bringing in all these invasives, all these ornamental plants that have no environmental benefits and so like the like I would read the lawns in the garden or yeah lawns in the garden by Owen Wormser and a day and there's another book by Dave Tallamy and um it just talks about the environmental impacts of what we do um just running a lawnmower for an hour is um equal to driving a mid-sized sedan for 300 miles. <laughs> and the, just, the, just the process of filling your gas tanks, they, I mean, they even estimate the amount of fuel that is spilt just filling our lawnmowers is more than the Exxon Valdez oil spill every year. Wow. And then- That's crazy. Just the impacts, like the, the your grass does not, the, the roots only go down an inch. So you're not going to capture any of that carbon. And you're only putting more carbon into the atmosphere by taking care of it. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> I don't need very many reasons at all to get rid of grass. So I would love to get rid of it. I hate taking care of it. I have to go out and get my clippers and clip it. Because yeah. I haven't killed it all yet. <laughs> And then I feel bad for my dog, but at least my dog will like go around munching on it. <laughs> there you go. I've heard someone say to replace it with um, clover. Uh, is there a native Ohio clover? Yes, actually, I'm going to, I am, I actually became um, a vendor for Ohio Prairie Nursery. So I will have um, Ohio native seed mixes available at the Second Street Market. Great. Okay. I didn't order any lawn alternatives, but if I get enough requests, I mean, I probably should. Um, but OPN.com um, is a great resource. Okay. Cool. And it just, they can help transform your yard into a, you know, if you still want grass, you can find some grass mixes that you only have to mow like once a month, maybe. Or uh, even then, I don't want that. I want <laughs> no guess. <Yeah. rest. laughs> I would just want it to be flowers, like. Right, yeah. It, but that's not going to make my dog happy. So. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I'll keep a little patch for ours, but that's that's about it. i have like in the process of digging up all the invasives in my well, like this yucca plant and this uh, ornamental grass. So <laughs> I have all these big holes that my dog dives in. <laughs> yes. Well. Um, 
as you mentioned, uh, you're going to be in the Second Street Market uh, starting actually on my birthday, May 22nd. So uh, oh, awesome. That's yeah. cool. Um, May 22nd is a and that is going to involve a lot of vendors. The May 22nd sale is a big native plant sale. So all the vendor, a lot of all vendors from around the area are going to be there. So it's nice. kind of, going to be promoted as a big native plant sale by Metro Parks. Very cool. And will you be in regularly and then I'll be after there. that? I'll be there every Sunday until October okay. after that. Awesome. Um, sorry, I lost my track. Uh, oh, there. Well, and I also, I saw on Instagram that you have some pretty cool merch that's available uh, now as well. <laughs> so I wonder if you could talk about that for a second and how people Oh, yeah, that's it. awesome. I was just, um, I've had a really good response. Um, nice. I, you know, I'm really happy, like, you know, all these things that have happened by chance, like EJ Waltmeyer of Public Ruckus, like I just happened to meet him. I walked into Ghost Light and I was like, hey, who does your design work? And the barista was like, that guy over there behind the register. Cause he, like at that time he was just starting his business. And I was like, and we met, we talked, I talked about my style, his style totally matched my aesthetic and we, came up with the logo and i did that before i even started oh wow nice i did it three years ago when right when he was started because now he's like he's hot so <laughs> nice the um but yeah his just his style and everything else that matched well and he designed uh him and greg garrickton he we uh came up with these t-shirts and merch and uh my plant description cards and oh, yeah. you know i you know one of the things i was I, I joke about i was like well i don't really come from a horticulture background so i'll just make sure my branding's on point <laughs> <laughs> but you know but i'm also very honest about what my background is and you know i it, it's i downplay it more <laughs> but it's like it's just because you're you're always constantly learning, and sure. and I, the thing that I like is just introducing it to new people. And once people start learning about that, it, it becomes an addiction. I mean, they found the antidepressant bacteria in the soil, so it's like working in the garden actually gives you, you know, makes you not depressed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. No, I. Uh... I, uh, I'm bipolar, so I struggle with depression a lot. And um, mm -hmm. I started a garden this year and it's been really helpful. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. That's where the basis of all this came from. And that's what I was, I, I've been talking about that recently. And, and, and then just pushing yourself to keep at it. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I would do it. And I'm, I feel so lucky to be able to do it here. And it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, so my uh, last question, I guess, is where all could people find you both, you know, in the real world and online world? And um, are people able to actually visit the greenhouse? And Yeah, I mean, they just need to email me because I still do work as a full-time flight attendant. So. Okay, I gotcha. <laughs> so it's during the week, I'm flying off to Paris or Amsterdam and uh, <laughs> or... Nice or Biloxi or Portland or, you know, and then I'm jet lagged for a little bit after and still then I come back and jump right back into gardening again. And uh, so just need to email me if they, the nursery is up in Vandalia. Um, it's a, near the ruins of Tadmore, the city up in Vandalia that was uh, abandoned during, after the 1913 flood. Oh, wow. Okay. That's where the name came from, Tadmore. <laughs> oh, gotcha. okay. And then Green's my last name. <laughs> so it has like a kind of historical context to the area. Um, so yeah, they can, you can email me and if you need to visit that. Um, but I'm my website and Instagram, I'll post, I have a couple of pop-ups on Saturdays that I'll be having, but every Sunday at Second Street Market, you can find me. So the greenhouse uh, at the food bank, unfortunately, it's not open to the public because it has to stay um, in a sterile environment. We do have like dedicated volunteers that have that make long term commitments. So you can volunteer at the greenhouse um, to harvest lettuce. So you can just 
look for that if you want to make a regular commitment to doing that. And then right now we're, you know, this, this greenhouse project has spurred a lot of development at the food bank, which is pretty incredible. So um, there's a lot of construction going on and, but yeah, just, just volunteering at the food bank, you, you can, I'm sure we can, you can peek in on the sides and see it. And, <laughs> and, but yeah, it's all awesome. up to them. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, uh, oh, and what about online? How do people find you? Uh, Tadmore Greens, T-A-D-M-O-R-G-R-E-E-N-E-S.com. But even if you misspell it, it still goes to my website. <laughs> Perfect. And then you said Instagram and Facebook as well? Yeah. That's the social media realm? Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show to talk with me. I really appreciate it. And I am looking forward to uh, getting some, uh, I hope that those uh, pawpaws turn out and I can <laughs> grab some trees from you. I will definitely let you know because awesome. I'm hoping so as well. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much. Again. I'll help a lot of funding. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, well, thanks again. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, that was my interview with Charlie Green of Tadmore Greens, and it was great talking with him and learning more about the nursery's operations. If you're interested in learning more about Tadmore Greens, visit tadmoregreens.com. And as Charlie mentioned, you can find him at the 2nd Street Market starting this Sunday, May 22nd through October, selling plants. So be sure to visit him there. I really enjoyed talking with him, and I really appreciate you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review and share it with a friend. Thanks so much for listening, and stay funky, Dayton.